Hi, I'm Lisa. Welcome to my glass studio. You know, glass fusing is such a fun and exciting hobby, craft, art form. One of the things I love about it, you've heard me say it before, but one of the things I love about it is I'm always learning something new. Do you realize I've been doing glass fusing and teaching it for about 38 years and I'm still learning new things? I'm still hearing new things from you, so thank you so much for responding, commenting, sharing, liking our videos. We really appreciate that. So glass fusing, you know, you take your glass, you layer it, you melt it in a kiln to make a pattern or a design. Fun, exciting, but there are a couple different directions you can take that, a couple different ways that you can approach fusing that you might want, like to try that's a little more exciting, a little more in-depth, maybe a little more advanced. And one of those techniques is called glass casting. Now casting is where you create a shape with some sort of mold device uh, structure to hold the glass in such a way that when you fire it, it retains its thickness and its shape. So the reason we have to do that is glass seeks a level of a quarter of an inch when you fire it. That means if you take two layers of glass and you melt it in the kiln, whatever size and shape that project is when it goes in, it'll be very similar, very close in shape and size to that when it comes out. Now, if you pile a whole bunch of material together, because glass seeks a level of a quarter of an inch, it's gonna spread and flow and become larger. So maybe your six inch by six inch project, that's four layers, might end up something more like seven by seven and sort of a, a square with rounded edges. You know, it'll be kind of like a big puddle instead of that original size and shape. So if you want to get creative, with building something that has layers and depth to it. You have to contain it in order to maintain that size, shape, the integrity of the materials, where you place them in that mold, and, what it's, and so you have control over what it's going to look like when it comes out of the kiln. Now you might be wondering, when is that important? Why is that important to me? Well, one of the things I love about glass casting is you can see different design elements on the bottom of the artwork, floating in the middle like they're suspended in space and then on the top depending on how thick the glass is you get a lot of different depth there so that's a really exciting new way to to create and design pieces it's different from your ordinary clear base stack design fire slump done so you can get some really ornate more um, advanced more elaborate designs by doing glass casting. So these are a couple examples I'd like to share with you and give you a little bit of explanation about how they're made. This is called Painted Forest and it's from my fun and fanciful fusing video. Let me hold this up for you. It's got, look at the nice, nice thickness, about a half inch thick here. If you look at the back, this is created with a glass box. We actually build a box out of this, this wispy white material, create a box, then we contain the box with material like this. This is a fiberboard kiln shelf material that's been cut up. We use that to contain the glass to retain this six inch square shape. We use the white to kind of help improve the edge quality. Then there's a piece of glass on the back that kind of supports those side walls when you assemble it. Then this piece, I put these trees in that kind of symbolize or uh, represent birch trees. And so if you look at the back side, I put some in sort of near the bottom of the art. Then there are a few pieces. So these show just a little bit from the front. They show more from the back. Then these pieces are kind of suspended in the middle. See how they're behind some of that other material? You really get a very cool look and a lot of depth there. Then these pieces are in the foreground. And so those show up bigger and you know more prevalent, more obvious than the other pieces. And then on the bottom in the frit, I used fine frit and I did a gradient of dark green, uh, medium green, blue, red to orange to yellow, which really gives us this fabulous sunset sort of effect. And it's just, you know, there's another thing relating to doing casting. There's some, something called perceived value. Anytime you add weight, whether it's physical weight like this, visual weight like this, it gives your artwork a higher perceived value because it is more artistic, it is more complicated to create, and therefore it translates into a more gallery style piece than just, you know, a quickie ornament or something. So that's another benefit to doing the casting. Plus, this type of technique, you can, you are in very, very strong control of those colors and those design elements and exactly where they are placed and fall and stay during the firing process. So this is a really exciting way to create. And you can work small, 
Small can be very, very effective and beautiful. Um, you can work bigger. I uh, I made a piece similar to this. It was a sculptural piece. It was like uh, 28 inches by 30 inches, gigantic, and like four inches thick. So this is definitely a scalable type of technique as well. So you start small, you fire for the small project. When you go larger, then you have to really slow down your firing process, your heating, your um, top temperature, and your cooling is much, much slower. So this is about a 24 hour project. That one I just mentioned, the really big one, that was a five day firing. It's 24 hour firing, five day. So when you do go bigger, what you wanna do is um, you know, consult the manufacturers and see what they're doing or other people online and see and compare you know, what other people do when they're going really big and thick and how long they're annealing and holding. So don't just jump in and do it. You know, if you're gonna go bigger, you need to do your own research and determine what's the best firing process temperatures and times for that particular project. Another project right here, this one's called Reflection. It's for my advanced glass fusing book, I'm sorry, video. And the cool thing about this is it's a pattern bar. So basically this project was made in half, right? In a big giant thick piece of glass. Imagine this half of the glass in the kiln with a smaller piece on the bottom, then consecutively bigger pieces, and they were heated till they rolled over each other. Then that piece of glass was cut on a saw and was the two pieces were put together to create a mirror image of themselves and this really awesome design. Then I also used that same kind of idea to create a base for it. It's really beautiful from the side. It's got beautiful profile there. It's beautiful from the back. Uh, and the way that this is laid out, I purposely used clear, then opal color, clear, transparent color, clear, opal color, and that's why you can see, if you look at this closely right in this area, you can see that wonderful depth that you're getting, and that's consistent with the materials I use to push that, reinforce that, enhance that sense of a greater depth. And there again, that's the cool thing about casting is you have all these different options, these ways to go, and believe it or not, even though it looks kind of, you know, uh, hit or miss, it's not. You're in real tight control of what's gonna happen. Now, the first time you do something like this, it may come out differently than you anticipated. This certainly did for me, but that doesn't mean you can't take that idea and use it again down the road and expand on it. And that's the wonderful thing about glass fusing. Again, it's scalable. You can do something today in a certain way Take that information, compare it with something else, and then keep moving and do something more, even ex more exciting in the future. All right, so here, this is a really, really cool piece. This is called Floating Feather. It is a huge block of glass. It's, let's see, about two inches this way, three inches this way. It's about three by three here, about two, two and a half inches here. Look inside there. Isn't that cool? You can see, can you see those feathers floating in there and that bit of fracture streamer? Fracture streamer is glass, clear glass with bits of streamers and little tiny shards of glass that are really thin. I tucked a piece in there to give it kind of a leafy look. Let me rotate this thing around for you. Look at this side, you can see that feather again. The feather is a piece of dichroic glass cut into the shape of a feather. And then I took a Dremel tool and I drew the veins of the leaves on the side that had the dichroic coating to remove it. So it has a little detail and design to it. This project right here was uh, created by creating a box and I used fiberboard material, this material right here, but larger. I created a box, I filled it with material and then I fired it. And this was also a five day firing because it's so big and thick. Um, but, and this one definitely needed cold working when it came out. Cold working is when you take the glass, the edge quality isn't really shiny. On a cast piece, you really need a very shiny uh, glass edge, you know, perfectly sheen, perfect sheen, in order to look into the artwork and see all that spectacular design detail that you've placed in there. So when this came out of the kiln, it had a tiny bit of texture to it. So what I do is I, I have a 12 inch grinder polisher and I took it to that machine and I start out with the heavy material. We grind it to even out the edge. Then we go to a, a lighter medium with grit wheel and we take those scratches out and we continually go down until we get to a polishing wheel. And then we polish this to a shine where you can see through it and you get that spectacular depth and clarity. I might also mention at this point that the materials that you use to fill your casting mold will determine the clarity of it the number of bubbles and the size of bubbles. 
Now, if you uh, go check out my blog, I've written a blog relating to casting, and in there I talk about the materials and why you might want to choose one material over another when you're working with your, with your cast piece. Remember, this is fine frit. This is sheet glass. This is larger chunks of frit, like casting rocks. They actually look like rocks, but they're glass for casting. That's why I have so much clarity in this one and so few bubbles, but I have kind of big bubbles. So different material for each one of these. So floating feather from Destination Innovation Book. That's my ebook available on my website. Now this fun over piece over here, this is a Crystal Garden. It's a brand new project out on my premium video membership. And this one, all right, this one I used a box. This one I used a fiberboard. This one I used fiberboard. This one I made my own custom mold with a combination of fiber paper, fiber, um, two fiber papers and copper wire. So the awesome thing about this project and what this is representing is that you can make any shape you want in casting. You can make any shape you want, you know, cutting glass, of course, but you can make any shape you want and have it big and thick like this. And look at that edge quality there, how beautiful that is. And look at the depth we have here. And I, I purposely went deeper, more color here, and then lighter as it went up um, to give it some sort of sense of movement. I purposely added some dichroic kind of in this direction to give it movement and make it kind of come follow this swirl and come up. I made the base so I would have this great presentation, not only to make it um, look really elegant and professionally presented, but also to make sure that it was really strong and sturdy for display. You don't want something like this after you put that effort into it to just topple over. And you put this in a regular little wire plate stand. It's like, no, I don't think so. This needs a more dedicated, professional, higher quality looking stand. So that's what we did on this project. So the cool thing about casting is you can make any old shape you want. Say you want to make a dog bone, you can do it. Say you wanted to make a heart, you wanted to make a, um, a Oh gosh, I don't know, a leaf shape, a lily pad, um, you know, a spider. I just saw a spider behind Nikki. Not a real one, so don't worry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, you want to make a spider. You want to make a, a hand shape. You want to make a, a four-leaf clover. You can do that. And that's really empowering to be able to do that and make your own size and shape. And then fill it with whatever you want. So cool. So... I hope this encourages you to maybe try it. I also have, let me back up a little bit. Sorry, got a little bleh, mouth there. Um, I also presented a video a while back on how to make these little hearts in stainless steel cookie cutters. And in that video, I talk about what materials you might wanna choose and how to cast glass on a small scale to get your feet wet and try it and get comfortable with it before you go bigger and start making your own individual shapes. So you might want to check out that video and I just want to let you know that casting is not something to be afraid of. It's not something to avoid. It's not something, oh, I'm never going to go there. You can go there small scale. You can go there uh, a little bit bigger. And this fits in a, uh, certainly a, you know, a nice medium to small size kiln. And you can have a lot of fun with a new and creative way to work components together, to work your materials together, to get something that either literally has a picture to it, something that has an absolute definite pattern, something that has material sort of floating in space, or something that's just an abstract collection of spectacular, brilliant, crystal, shiny colors. So uh, I hope this encourages you to maybe, you know, maybe try casting. If not, research more about it. It's a lot of fun. It's a great topic. Also, let me mention, uh, this is how I make my cast sinks with this same method. Uh, just bigger. I take something like this, a stainless steel ring, larger, of course. I line it with fiber paper and I fill it with paper and boom, I've got a sink. So this has a lot of potential to go a lot of different directions. So don't be afraid of it. Give it a try. I've got these four different places where you can get more information, more instruction on how to do these pieces. And I hope you check those out. And, um, you know, thanks for watching. Thanks for joining us. And please like, follow, subscribe, make your comments. We love that. We really appreciate that. And uh, it helps us, encourages us to come out with more content, more videos that you will find valuable and make you smile and enjoy your glass fusing even more. That was awesome, right? Okay, so uh, make sure you follow, like, and subscribe. Comment all the above. And please consider becoming a premium video member. You get this project right here plus uh, 28 others that you can uh, have immediate access to. 
They have full-size printable eBooks, step-by-step -step video instruction, materialists, firing guides, everything you need to be successful completing those projects. So become a premium video member. We're coming up on our, for, on our second anniversary. Got a lot of exciting things coming up for that. So, and this year, last year we did giveaways to, to everybody. This year, all the giveaways are going only to members. So you're gonna wanna be a member. And until next time, happy fusing.